good afternoon, Stacy. Thank you for joining us here to talk more about your business and uh, tell some other pros about advice and lessons learned along the way. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Perfect. Um, well, Stacy, as we get started, we'd love to learn a little bit about your background and maybe starting off with um, how you started Cozy Cabin Cleaning and what got you interested in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so C Cozy Cabin Cleaning was born after I started in property management for vacation rentals. And it's a it's a, a booming industry, especially right now. It's growing in our area as well. And um, so I, I oversaw the operations portion of um, the property management, which included the housekeeping division when I started, because I've always been in operations, but when I started, I had no idea that I was going to fall in love with the cleaning division. Um, very unexpected, but I did. And there's a great need in our area, especially um, for cleaning companies that cater to vacation rentals. So it's residential, but it's its own, it's, it's kind of a different animal than your standard residential clean. Um, so when I left property management, I kind of was at this crossroads and had this opportunity to start my own thing. And so here we are. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, do you mind telling me a little bit more, just general information on uh, kind of how many or, or how long you've been working on the business and yeah. um, what type of work you do and what type of work you enjoy the most? Yes. So I started this, um, really it was January this year. I got, I started getting it ready in December of 2020. So we're new to the, um, to the industry really. And um, the, you're, you're asking what kind of work I do yeah. with the business, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I do everything. Um, but I, I started out doing, literally doing everything, which is uh, too much and um, was very tough and it's slow moving in, in a case like that. So, um, you know, I was cleaning, I was, trying to be a tech person, which I am not, you know, um, there's, there's parts of business that I enjoy and come easy to me. Um, but there's other things that I know nothing about. So a lot of it was a time suck, you know, and it was slowing me down on what I really intended to do and the purpose of why I'm out there. Um, but piece by piece, you know, as you get started, you start to bring in, uh, support, um, you know, software, other teams that handle pieces of the business for you. And um, it's freed me up to do the work that I enjoy most, which is cleaning. And then I started adding cleaning staff. And now I get to, you know, focus on uh, the networking and growing the business and um, uh, building what I intended to build. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. <Yeah. laughs> um, no, there's a lot of aspects to being a, a small business owner. What gave you the kind of courage or what got you excited about starting the business? And I know you touched on a little bit when we started here, but what was that journey like where you said, okay, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to start the business. And, and what made you dive into the deep end? Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, because I've always been drawn to the idea of, of having and running my own business. Like I, I, I just, I love the idea of it, but um, I also know enough to know that it's not to be taken lightly because there's a huge, uh, huge risk involved and, and that can mean a lot of different things, but time, um, time means a lot to me. And I know that starting a business, you're going to be, um, it's going to be years before it's really settled or and not even settled, but stable. Right. And where you even know if it's going to work and if all the decisions you've made even mean anything. Okay. And I just hadn't found anything that I loved enough to commit to. Yeah. And then the housekeeping thing, I just, I, I tell people, I laugh at this a lot because I just never in my life did I ever think there would be a day when like cleaning uh, <laughs> would be my thing, you know, and that's what's happened here. I mean, it's, it's more than cleaning, of course, but anyway, so here I I'm in property management. turns out I love the housekeeping division. I love running it. I love doing it. You got to be meticulous. You've got to know how to run a team. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it just, it almost, it's almost like it just came to, to fruition on its own. And then I noticed the opportunity there. And when I had the opportunity to do it, I just, I took it. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's inspiring. And, and uh, I'm sure there's been ups and downs over the last yeah. several months, but, sounds but it like makes it easier yeah. when, when you can see it, you know, and when you love it, 
and you know it, like you, you can see a little ahead of yourself and it helps a lot because <laughs> it gets scary no matter what, you know? <laughs> definitely. definitely. Um, and maybe for advice for others out there that are thinking about starting their own business, um, what uh, steps did you take when you were thinking about starting the business and what advice did you give to other people that are thinking about, uh, you know, following a similar path? Yeah. I mean, really, uh, the very beginning, once I knew that I was going to do this, it's, it's things like starting the LLC, you know, and putting tax accounts into place. And, and I was able to do all, a lot of that or all of that on my own. I, I knew enough about it. So you've, you've got those pieces. But another really big piece for me, and I think for any, any company is, um, is networking. And I don't mean like going out to these, you know, networking events and having to be social, because that's one way to do it. But really just, I contacted everybody in my phone contacts, and I told them what I was going to be doing. And then I touched base with these people. So some of these people I talk to regularly anyway, but not everybody, they're just, you know, they're acquaintances, or, you know, it was a handyman I met once, I told everybody, you know, and that, that brought me business. These people that I don't talk to very often, they brought me business. And um, so I, so I know people have always told me networking, networking. And I just, I always pictured it as like getting dressed up and going to those events. And <laughs> awkward for me. I don't really like that, you know, but networking is just re- leaning on your people, you know, being a friend and value to them as well. Um, but really just, you've got a web of people out there that you, you don't even realize, you know, it's just yeah. your life um, and, and lean on them. That's what I would suggest <laughs> amazing you never I, f- I feel like you never know if someone can be helpful until you ask or tell them what yeah. you do so it's so true you know people will surprise you or your connection yeah. surprise you yeah yeah well if you don't mind me asking what did um when you did reach out to them what how did you frame it did you just tell folks hey i'm starting the business wanted to tell you or, or how did yeah. you uh, yeah yeah i did so um you know the Friend, people who knew me a little better um, knew that I was making a change in my life, you know, with work anyway. And so I explained like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to focus on this piece of the business and industry and I'm going to do my own thing. So FYI, but the other folks that I didn't, you know, like I said, the the handyman, for example, you know, or people I don't talk to as often, I just, um, I sent text messages or called or messaged on Facebook. Right. And, and just let them know like, Hey, I, you know, I've been in property management for vacation rentals, you know, for the last year. Um, fell in love with housekeeping. There's a big need out there. If you know anybody, throw my name. Simple as that. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. And um, maybe shifting gears a little bit, uh, what would you say is your favorite part of working in Cozy Cabin and, and like what gets you excited at the start of a week or, or even yeah. at the end of a long day? Um, you know, what gives you inspiration to keep going? Right. Um, so that I would have, it's kind of a twofold answer. So there's, the main reason I got into it, which I, I like, it excites me. I love being a support for these hosts. It's not an easy job to be a host and they're, they're running a business too. I, you know, I, people have different ideas about, you know, vacation rentals. And when I say this, Airbnb is the most common term for vacation rentals, but the host, when they, especially when they have multiple properties, even if they have one, it's just, it's very demanding and it's a business and it's in and of itself. So when, Like in any business, when you have a really good team uh, taking care of certain pieces um, and you don't have to think about it, then you're offering a great relief. And that's what I am and want to continue to be for these hosts. Cleaning and turning these properties is critical. It's it's a huge portion of what they do. The the product they deliver, uh, the quality of the home, keeping it up over time. So you want to make sure that you have someone who's trustworthy and communicates well. And I get to be that. And that's what I went in for. And that's what we're doing. And I love building on that. And then the other piece, though, that's really exciting is watching it grow. You know, the business itself, this thing, this baby you've created and you put your heart and soul into and it keeps you up at night and you're dreaming about it. And it's the first (laughs) thing you think about when you wake up, you know, and you get to see all of your decisions and your effort and your heart and it it's 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 growing and it's exciting you know yeah yeah <laughs> you know you're a uh, small business owner when you're in the shower and you think of the business and when you wake up and you yeah think oh and you've got notes on your phone and you've got scraps of paper and you're throwing all your ideas in the, into a hat to <laughs> the later, you know? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and then what would you say is uh, maybe the hardest part of the business and, and um, you know, what keeps you up at night when you are thinking about the business at night? 
Right. Um, the hardest part is, is staffing. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons for it. I think it's pretty common though in, in any business. Um, you know, with staffing, it's not always easy to find the best fit, but staff is just as critical and important as your actual clients. I mean, they're equally important and you've got to have great people and then you want to take care of them. And so it's balancing all that, but it's, it's, um, it's really just overarching. It's staffing. And for staffing, what have you found well to find people to work with you? And, and what have you found well to incentivize um, people to stay and keep working with you? Right. So um, the, I, right now I'm still working on this, you know, um, <laughs> I, uh, when I put a, an ad out and, um, start talking to people, I, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to find folks that, um, have the heart and care because you can train a lot of things. You can't train people to care, you know? So I'm looking for that, but I, I've just always had this idea and belief that you just don't know until you get into it. You know, we all, I mean, we all just fit situations differently at different times in our life. So someone can be a great person and a great employee and just not work for what we're doing right now, you know? And so it's just trying to find somebody who, where, what I do and what this job would offer that person and their family, does it fit for them right now? You know, and then, um, and then training, making sure that, um, you know, I give them the attention that they need to, in training, which is still a development right now. I mean, I'm like trying to pull this together, you know? Um, but and then appreciation. So right now I can't show as much appreciation with money as I plan to down the road. You know, we're all pretty basic, but, um, knowing making like I'm communicating with them constantly. So they know, um, when we need to adjust, but mostly I just, I need them to know that they're super important, you know, to the host, to these guests, to our company, you know, to me and everything that I'm doing. Um, so it's, I, I guess all I can really offer right now, besides the basic pay is, is, good communication and appreciation. And I just don't hold grudges or, you know, um, make anybody feel less than if this just doesn't make sense for us at this time. Yeah. Yeah. I think what you mentioned about having the heart or the mindset to it as well it is, you know, foundational. If you have yeah. someone who wants to do a good job, you can coach them on. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. There's nothing I appreciate more than like just the good attitude and somebody who can roll with it and wants yeah. to be good, you know, like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Um, and then maybe, uh, you know, thinking back to when you started the business and now are there any things that you wish, or, um, you know, if you go back in time, you wish you had known at the time that you'd come to appreciate now. Um, and in vain of that, like, what, what would you tell people that are starting their business today to maybe keep an eye on that they wouldn't expect? Right. So, this is a funny question for me because I think like the first thing that comes to mind when it's like, man, I wish I had known is how expensive it is to run a business. You know, um, I didn't realize, and I thought I knew a lot, you know, but I, I didn't realize how expensive it is to run like a business that's like fully registered and tax paying and all of the taxes, you know, and all of the things you have to pay for just to operate, stitch the business together and operate. It's so expensive. So I, 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 sometimes think, man, I wish I would have known. Um, cause it would have, it could have maybe moved me along faster or I would have like priced things differently, of course. However, I also wonder if it's one of those things that's better off not being known because once you're in it, you just got to do it, you know, where I'm an analyzer and I might have overthought that and thought like, Oh, I can't, I can't charge that. I can't do this. Well, it's happening and it's working just fine. You know? So, um, how expensive it is to run a business came as a surprise and maybe could have been helpful up front, but you know, sometimes ignorance is bliss. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes yeah. maybe you wouldn't start it if, if you had those hesitations that you learned to work through. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I do tend to um, fall victim to analysis paralysis. So it may have been for the best, but, yeah. and then I think you had a second part to that question. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it, it was in similar vein of, you know, what would you tell someone that started oh. today, which I think uh, was a good point of, you know, consider all, all the logistics or the cost to the business. Um, yeah. Or, yeah. Or don't, you know, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think really I, when it comes to starting a business, I just, here's my thought on this, right. Um, there's most likely going to be a point in time when you're, 
when you're at a crossroad or the opportunity presents itself or whatever, right? Because a lot of people, I think a lot of people think about running and starting their own business. We have ideas. We think what we know is best, right? And you want to put it into action. Um, but if and when that time comes, right, where you're like, okay, I, I could do this right now. I could go this direction or this direction. And it's like just if you can do it, do it. Because what's the worst that's going to happen? It fails, whatever failure means. Okay. It just, it doesn't work out. But if you don't, you're failing yourself anyways. So just take the leap and do it. That's what I'd say. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot harder to look back and say, oh man, I wish I should have done that. And you couldn't do it. So you can't reflect on it. And I tried it. I learned from it because I think you're right. There's no, you don't right. just learn how to do it better in the future or learn something that you didn't know before. Yeah. And you get a lot out of it. It's, it's an excellent learning experience one way or another. So can't, can't really lose maybe a little money and time, which can hurt, but yeah. <laughs> still fun. So. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then, you know, for folks that are looking to go into the same industry that you're in, um, how would you describe like a typical week and, and how do you split your time throughout the week? Oh, so I'm not the best at time management. You know, everybody's like, oh, time management. Yeah, great. Um, <laughs> anyways, so I don't, I'm not like a scheduler. I should be. I'm just not really built like that. So it goes against my natural brain. But um, I am just always working on it. So I, I'm not a nine to fiver, you know, so that I don't run my business like that either. But um, I... I guess you really, this is one of those cases where you just, you have to do you. So what that looks like for one person might be like, I have a friend who's fantastic at time blocking, you know, I can probably do all I do between nine and five, but I weave myself in between getting my kids to school and then working on the business. And then some of it's a combination of putting out the current fire versus like I, what I do try to do, by the way, is, is have only one or two major things that I'm trying to accomplish. Like in this case, or currently I'm, I'm working on training because it's such a big piece and it's so it's going to have such a great impact on the company, staff, my time, et cetera, from here to the near future. So I will say that um, is uh, just, you know, making sure you have an idea of what are the bigger pieces are that you need to attack for a bigger impact. And then uh, make those a priority, you know, so prioritization would be my approach rather than like scheduling time and yeah. great time management, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to plan, plan your strengths in your own style and not try to try to. Yeah, perfect. yeah. Um, if you want it, you'll, you'll make it happen. It's, it's going to come together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then what like tools or resources do you use uh, to help you with the business? Yes, uh, a lot of those, right? So, um, and I see this kind of as a front end, back end thing. And the front end or my storefront in my case is, it's all, all I mean, it's pro site, pro phone. Um, I have, I don't have to think about it, thank God. And so all of that's taken care of. So I have pro site, pro phone, handling everything uh, customer facing as far as like uh, image, branding, social posts, you know, the phone, the website, all of that's super important. Um, but I don't want to do it or think about it. So that's been a godsend. And then on the back end, same kind of thing. I, in our industry, um, we have some options. And one of my that I use is uh, resort cleaning. So it's, it's a software that houses communication uh, through notes, photos, schedules um, between us and the hosts. And that's been a huge, um, a huge relief for us. And it, it's, it helps elevate our professionalism and uh, efficiency, you know, so it's been great. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, that's really, really good to hear. And in terms of the community and where you go to for support, um, you mentioned early on, you reached out to a lot of your contacts and potentially you know, yes. other handy people. Um, now that you're in the industry yourself as a small business owner, do you keep in touch with other small business owners in your industry? And do you go to each other for advice and support? Yes. And let me tell you, it's, it's such a relief to talk to somebody who's in it with you. <laughs> Like I, yesterday I was at a friend's birthday party and the dad is in uh, commercial cleaning, but dealing with the same, he's at a different stage than I am even. He's already up and running and doing just fine. But you know, the, the problem solving never ends. Right. And anyways, but as an example, just having that conversation with him and, and relating to each other. And I've, I've picked up great tips and ideas from him. Um, other things like groups. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups too. And that's been a huge help both from, um, you know, the, the 
people that you meet, you know, in the industry, like we have local cleaner groups here, for example. So tips, tricks, sure. But we also rely on each other. If there's like last minute call outs, you know, who can help? That's been great. And then just industry specific too. I joined a ton of, um, a variety of Facebook groups for the industry. And so anytime I jump on Facebook, which is, you know, too often, I'm constantly seeing a feed of thoughts, uh, you know, uh, likes, dislikes from hosts, guests, uh, cleaners. I'm just, I feel like I've got my uh, thumb on the industry and it's, I'm just always seeing what's going on and what the chatter is all about, you know. Awesome. It probably helps to relate when you're having, you know, a tough day. You can see, hey, someone else is going through this too. Or when yeah. you're having a great day, you can celebrate that as well. Yes, great. you know, or these common problems that we have. It's like, hey, well, how are you guys dealing with this? And then you just see a bunch of responses. You know, like that's going to work for me. It's great. You know, sometimes you don't want to see it. You know, you've had, you're having a week, and it's like, <laughs> I can't. It's, it's an overload, but you shut it off. You know, but it's yeah. there, so it's nice. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned the, you know, having the, the front end of your shop uh, with their website through ProSite and the phone with ProPhone. So thank you for um, yeah. you know, some, of, some of the feedback you've given there. Um, what has that experience been like working with our team and any feedback that you give to us for things that are going well or things to, to improve? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's been excellent. And what I mean by that is I, I think the sign of a great service company is when whatever it is they're doing for you, you really don't have to think about it much, right? And that's been the case since the get-go, since I started with ProSight and ProPhone, um, I haven't had to do much with it. And so it's completely wiped off a large and important piece of the business from for me, I don't have to do anything, you know? And so it's been, um, it's been exactly what it needs to be, which is all I can ask. And then, um, I guess really, I'm just looking forward to all of the additional features that come as you guys grow. It's all, they've already started trickling in and um, not everything's going to fit what we do specifically, but they will. And there's things that I'm not even thinking about. You're working with a lot of different businesses and um, I'm basically just kind of really excited to see what will end up fitting and adding value to what we do. But for right now, it's served us so well and relieved um, a lot of my time and mental energy, which is important to me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's really good to hear. Um, <laughs> and maybe last question just about the experience with, with our team is um, what made you from the beginning, like want to give everyone a shot and get your website going and, and try the phone application out? What, what, you know, really got you excited to give it a shot? Yeah. So it was, um, uh, the timing was fantastic. So I, I didn't reach out to ProPhone. Um, Shannon reached out to me. And then not only, you know, and you, you get people um, soliciting all the time and, you know, timing has a lot to do with it, of course, but an approach maybe, I don't, I don't know. But what I do know is that, you know, she mentioned that you guys had these services and it was like, cool, because I'm literally drowning in it right now and I, I hate it. Um, and then she gave me a sample right away, like within minutes, I got a sample so I could see what I was dealing with and what they had to offer, you know, so that really sealed the deal. And the price point was fantastic. Um, and then I think within a week, I had my website up, uh, phone started. And then since then, the communication, I mean, you guys are so available and the communication is fantastic. And I'm a huge communication person. I mean, I don't care what part of your life, it's super important. Um, so it's just been seamless and easy. Awesome. Thank you. We, we try our best, uh, other side, you know, another type of small business owner and right. the communication is at the front of it. And, and I think ultimately, no matter who your client is or who you're working with, if you're transparent with them and responsive and all that, that, so. Exactly. You know, and most of us are just kind of floating in the same banana boat. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, last question for you would just be, is there anything else that you'd want to highlight about, you know, your career and advice you'd have for other uh, folks looking at the industry, maybe even people that aren't going to be small business owners, but work uh, with cleaners or work with folks in the rental space, um, anything you want? Yeah. Yes. Uh, share, you know, just keep sharing with each other. I think there's just our industry, the vacation rental industry is still pretty young. It's been around, you know, for a decade or more, but really, it's really just starting to get hot and catch on. 
And there's a lot of really young businesses. I mean, even the software and programs that we use now, they're they're up and running and they service companies that are in the millions, right? But they're still new. And, and but there's this, we have this whole community online, you know, networking in person, whatever. And people are are we're learning a lot from each other as we go. And that's my thing is I just think that if we continue to keep sharing with each other, um, everybody's going to be able to get a lot better, a lot faster. Amazing. Amazing. Well, Stacey, thank you so much for sharing your story and learning a little bit more about your journey and, and also sharing advice for others that might come across this. And hopefully they'll have the courage to jump in the deep end and try the life of being a small business owner. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Okay. Sure. Well, Stacey, thank you for your really, really generous um, for offering to do this today. And, and also, oh, please, you guys are the best. I love it.